In this video, we apply thermodynamics to phase changes. One example of a phase change is a cube of ice melting at room temperature. Another one is boiling of water above 100 degrees Celsius. For a reminder on thermodynamic state variables, spontaneous or not spontaneous transformations, as well as exothermic and endothermic reactions, Please see the video, Thermodynamic State Variables. In that video, we saw that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Here, we add a small circle as superscript to delta G, delta H, and delta S to indicate that we are considering pure phases at ambient pressure. Above 0 degrees Celsius, ice melts, and above 100 degrees C, water boils. Both processes are spontaneous in those temperature ranges. Their delta Gs are negative. But what are the signs of delta H and delta S for these transformations? Pause the video and think. For the melting of ice and the boiling of water, both delta H and delta S are positive, because in both cases bonds must be broken and the disorder increases. If we consider the reverse reactions, both delta H and delta S are negative. Let us move to considering phase equilibrium. This requires delta G to be equal to zero. Using the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, we can define the melting temperature as T melt equals delta H melt divided by delta S melt. And we note that we get the same value if we consider the freezing reaction, since delta H freeze equals minus delta H melt, and that delta S freeze equals minus delta S melt. In a similar way for boiling, we get T boil equals delta H boil divided by delta S boil, which has the same value if we look at the condensation reaction, since delta H condensation equals minus delta H boil and delta S condensation equals minus delta S boil. Phase changes are very important to understand the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions, as well as between exo and endothermic reactions. Enthalpy and entropy changes are not much affected by temperature. So the melting of ice is endothermic, with a positive delta H regardless of temperature. However, the free energy depends strongly on temperature through the term minus T delta S. This is why the free energy for melting is negative above zero degree C, giving it a spontaneous nature even if it is endothermic. Below zero degree C, the reaction is still endothermic, but this time the term minus T delta S is not large enough to make delta G negative. Therefore, below zero degree Celsius, the melting of ice is non spontaneous as we very well know. In summary, phase changes are useful to understand the differences between spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions, as well as to distinguish these from exo- and endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions are not necessarily spontaneous. While enthalpy changes do not depend much on temperature, free energy changes strongly depend on it, because of the term minus T delta S. This underlines the role of entropy in determining whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. It explains, for example, that ice melts above zero degrees C, although that reaction is 
endothermic.